Welcome back to the Bible study again as we go through the seven churches in the book of Revelations that John wrote to. Uh, this installment, we're going to talk about the church at Philadelphia, and that's where Will Smith lived, right, in Bel Air? <laughs> no? Okay. Not quite. All right, different one. All right, gotcha. So anyways, we're in Revelation chapter 3 still. I'm John Evans again. I'm with Gabe Ross, and so as we walk through this again some uh there's some defining characteristics of jesus has talked about but then this church appears to be getting it right yeah okay seems to be all right so we're gonna break this <laughs> out start reading again in verse seven so if you want to follow along with me you can do that there it says to the angel of the church in philadelphia write these are the words of him who is holy and true who holds the key of david what he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. That's pretty awesome in and of itself, but <laughs> that's that characteristic of Jesus. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, there's a lot there. And I said Sunday, if there's one church you want to be, it seems to be Philadelphia. Absolutely. There are aspects of all of them that are good. but um, So he kind of speaks to that. That true one means not, fault, not fail, uh, false, not fake. It's true, it's right, it's right. real. And uh, so Jesus is that true one. He's the true prophet, true king, true priest. But it, it seems to pass on a little bit to Philadelphia, you know, too, because they're they're the true church, yeah. seems to be. Yeah. And then he says, who has the key of David? Well, you know, David is the one who God said someone would sit, a king would sit on his throne, yeah. who would be the true king. Right. And so it seems to be that there's there's that nuance there that, well, Philadelphia seems maybe to be the true church yeah. who was born out of the Messiah, out of Jesus, which was the church that he intended. And so it says that, you know, he's going to protect that church and whatever opportunity he gives them, no one can take that away. That no one can call them false. No one can destroy them. Um, that they are, even if they are small, which they are, yeah. that they are true and they are right and they are real and genuine in their faith. And they're going to get a reward because of that. Yeah, it's really cool too to see the type of deeds that they display mm -hmm. as the church. And, and, yeah. and look, if you want to look for a model, yeah, for how we should be uh, running as as the church. This yeah. is it, right? Yeah, for so, sure. Okay, well, let's look together. Verses eight and nine. I'll begin reading in verse eight. It says, "I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut." That's really cool. Mm -hmm. It says, "I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews though they are not, but are liars." I'll make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Yeah. So there's a couple of things as you were talking there. So you think of this idea that um, what God tells to Peter on this rock, I'll build my church, yeah. which is the foundation, the truth, the gospel of Jesus right. Christ. He's going to build that. But he also tells them that, you know, whatever you bind on earth, yeah. down in heaven. Right. So there's a little bit of authority right. given to those who are faithful and true and, and right. And so it, it seems here, again, to be passed on to this church. Now, they're in an, in an important place. And right. so you think of open door. Well, that's an open door for the gospel to be, to be shown. And they're in this city where it's a crossroad of major trade routes. Yeah. It was known to be the gateway to the east. Right. And so Jesus tells his church that I want you to make disciples and I want you to baptize them and they have a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe to all the nations. Yeah. Well, practically, they had that opportunity right. for the gospel to go to all the nations. Well, if you go back, because this church was planted when Paul was there, if you go back to Acts chapter 19, which I hope our people remember, <laughs> right. in verse 10, it says, all the residents of Asia Minor, both Jew and Greek, heard the word of God. Mm. This church had the opportunity oh, to do good. that. Yeah. So it, it could be, of course, for all the churches, but this church was at the forefront of opening up the gospel to the world, and it was accomplished in that day and time that they'd at least all heard it. Gotcha. So, yeah, I, again, if the, the opportunity was there, for yeah. sure, and if they're uh, existing and operating as God has commanded, and he mm -hmm. obviously is proud of their yeah. advancements, pr proud of the job that they've done. It's right. well done, good and faithful servant, right? I mean, so if that's the case and the opportunity was there, you can make that assumption mm -hmm. uh, pretty easily. Okay, so yep. verse 10 some theology here. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to read verse 10 by yeah. itself, and then okay. let's talk about it. Okay, it says, Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, 
I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. Hello, (laughs) pre-trib. Yeah, pre-tribulation. Yeah. Okay. So before we get there, hold on to that. Before we get there, um, they were a small church. Yep. They were weak. They didn't have the ability and power that everybody thought, but they had the opportunity because they were true and right because they seemed to be of the line of David, which Mm -hmm. was inferred here. Um, So you think of this idea that, well, we don't have enough. We're not big enough. We don't have everything that Sardis had. We don't have the facility or the buildings or activities or personnel or whatever that is. God's reminding us here, he's the one who builds his church. Mm -hmm. We're not. Yeah. We just have to be faithful. Right. And so it brings to mind when John, who writes this, writes in his gospel, he must increase, I must decrease. Yeah. And so even though they're weak and they're small, God can use them as sure. long as they're open and they're willing. So he's opened that door because their hearts are open to him. And as you said, the reward they seem to receive yeah. is that they won't have to experience the oppression and persecution and tribulation that comes at the end. So you said, hello, pre-trib. This seems to point to that yeah. they will get to skip the tribulation, right. which talks about the rapture or removal of the church pre-tribulation. Right. And it, we're going to look at that a little bit in the in the next uh, Sunday about that same idea. And I don't want to get too deep on it now because we're going to get to it then. But this is, I said, there are two places that we will differ, people in general, right. over the view of Revelation. One is how you view it, yeah. the four perspectives and the different view of the tribulation. Yep. And those are the two main areas people get tripped up. Sure, yeah, settle down, theologians. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about it more, so just <laughs> chill out, all right? All right, so, but whatever you want to say, I was going to bring up the contrast from Sardis yeah. to Philadelphia here. Yeah. And again, Sardis was well-equipped with everything that mm-hmm. they needed, big, apparently, large, had all the facilities, all the programs, dead. Yeah. Here, Philadelphia yeah. is small but thriving, right? And he tells them to run with endurance. Yeah. I mean, Paul talks about that all the time. First yeah. Corinthians yeah. 9, he's like, why do runners run? Mm-hmm. They run to win, and yep. to win, you have to endure. So he says, hey, run that type of race yeah. to try to win. And that's what they're doing. And again, application, right? I mean, like this is the area that you you look at and say, man, if, if again, we're going to model somebody. This mm-hmm. is the church to model. But that idea of, again, persevering indicates mm-hmm. that there are some oppression. There are some... Things, some hurdles, some right. some distractions, some things that could cause you to vary off course. Yeah. But but he says like patiently endure, mm-hmm. persevere, mm-hmm. keep trudging. And and you know I, my dad always talks about this this uh, evangelist that he would say how you doing and his response was always keeping on, keeping on. <laughs> and that's us, right? Yeah, like that's what we're sure. called to do. Like keep on keeping on and just continue to trust towards Jesus in all that we do. And I mean, the Bible speaks to that very clearly, but uh, I think it's important and worth noting. All right, so I'm going to read 11 through 13. Mm-hmm. We're going to close this one out, but just know again, as I read this, just hold on to some of these statements in here because this is good, good stuff. So let's begin reading in verse 11. I'm coming soon. Again, look back to what he says to Sardis. I'll come mm-hmm. like a thief in the night, and I'll come and I'll come to you. Uh, hold on to what you have. All right? So think about it. We talked about it a while ago. Like uh, when we talked about Thyatira, he said to those small group in there, he said, hold on yep. to what is good and true. That's right? right. And so again, he says, hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. He says, him who overcomes, again, that theme throughout all of these letters, He whom overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Wow. Mm -hmm. Never again will he leave it. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I'll also write on him my new name. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you got this idea that they already have their crown. Yeah. Like no one will remove it right, from you. Right. And he says, keep on, keep, yeah. keep watching guard, yeah. keep doing what you're doing, persevere to the end. Yep. And so this is kind of that idea. The other receives the crown mm-hmm. if they endure, but, and he's telling them they have to endure, sure. yeah. but it's almost like they've already received it. And mm-hmm. I know they haven't physically, yeah. but we have partially because, you know, scripture tells us that, you know, we, we see dimly now, but we'll see fully right. then. Philippians tells us that our citizenship is in heaven, like it's already secure. So it almost speaks to it's now, but not yet, yeah, you know. Yeah, and so right. you've got it. You're doing the right thing. Keep on, and nobody can take that away from you because that's what's going to come when you finish your race. 
I, I, I can't get over just, again, the opportunity that God gives even to the ones that are not performing at the level that he expects mm-hmm. or the ones that are failing altogether. And right. he still says, there's hope for you. There's Repent, hope. man. Yeah. Turn away from it and walk in the direction I'm calling you to. Yeah. And so here, just again, that that patiently endure, it, it indicates, hey, you're, con- you're walking in the right way. Continue to. No matter what comes yeah. up, no matter what happens, stay the course. Yeah, yeah there's, there's hope. I mean, you'd see... Criminal on the cross. Yeah. There's hope all the way to the end. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Good stuff. All right. So as we start to uh, wrap up these seven churches and how we walk through them, this was installment number six of seven. We have one more. We're excited that you joined us. I really want to encourage you. If you watched this episode, I want to encourage you to go and watch the last one. All right. As we look at the church at Laodicea, um, there is, uh, you know, a lot just in that letter to that church, but we're going to... Uh, look at some commonalities that run, these thread that run through all of the letters to the churches as we do that session as well. So we're glad you guys joined us. Glad that you're tuning in with us. Continue to as we continue through looking at the seven letters to the churches in the book of Revelation.